Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. LEGO has a long history of remote controlled sets. If we focus only the last 15-17 years, we had power functions with infrared control and these two remotes here, and then came Powered Up or Control Plus for the Technic set specifically, and we had to switch to touchscreen app control. There is a remote made for this system, but it's designed specifically for trains. It has buttons, no joysticks, no analog controls, and by default only works with the City Hub in standalone mode. For each Technic set, you must create a separate profile in the Powered Up app, and the app must be running while you control your car. There are viable third party solutions like the Brick Controller 2 app, which works with a whole range of different game controllers, but you still need your phone to act as a bridge between the controller and the hub, and unless you buy a specific controller like this, it's not as convenient to use. I've been hoping for a native LEGO controller like this for years, I talked about this concept in several videos of mine, unfortunately it hasn't happened yet, and honestly I don't see it happening anytime soon. But what if I told you that today there's an existing solution to connect a physical controller directly to the hub, so that it works without a phone in between, and all joysticks and buttons can be used for customizable actions with a minimal lag. Too good to be true? I totally understand you, I would say the same. Well, it's still here, and the magic word is Pybricks. Yes folks, no cheating here, this is an Xbox controller connected directly to the Technic hub in the Audi. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Pybricks, I posted a video about the system two years ago, but let's recap quickly. Pybricks is a coding environment that runs in your browser. It's based on Python and it is compatible with every powered up based LEGO hub you see here, so you don't need a separate coding interface for each. You can run code from your computer, but you can also run code on the hubs independently, something LEGO couldn't figure out for these hubs here. There was also a huge update recently, which I will talk about in detail in another video. It introduced visual code blocks into the system, similar to other solutions like the Mindstorms or Powered Up app, but unlike those, you have proper and detailed documentation for everything, and if you want to go deeper, you can see the code behind the blocks and even edit it. Pybricks is free in general, but to be able to edit the code blocks, you need to become a supporter. You can get access with a monthly subscription via Patreon or with a one-time purchase. You can find more information about this on the Pybricks website. But now back to the latest and frankly most amazing update. I've been testing this feature for some time now and it really is a breakthrough for LEGO RC control. To use the visual blocks you still need a basic understanding of coding and some key principles, but for simple vehicle control you just need to customize the ports for the model in question and you are ready to go. You can use it for official sets like this one here, or you can also set it up for custom creations. All you need is an Xbox controller with Bluetooth, so any model released since 2016. And best of all, it works with the Technic Hub, the Robot Inventor Hub, the Spike Prime Hub and the Spike Essential Hub. To show you the details, I hand over the controls to Lawrence. Hey there, thanks for having me, Belash. I'm Lawrence from Hybrix and I'm thrilled to be here and showcase Xbox controller support for Hybrix. Many of you have asked for this, so it's really exciting to finally release it. You'll be able to use all buttons and analog inputs just like a normal sensor or the train remote connected to your hub. You can use it to drive Technic vehicles, your own creations, or even big machines like Technic cranes. We'll be making plenty of example projects in the coming weeks, but today I'll show you everything you need to drive most Technic vehicles like the Audi or the off-road truck. So let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is go to our app via pybricks.com in a browser with Bluetooth support such as Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Because Xbox controller support is brand new, you can try it out by clicking on Try New Beta Features, which takes you to the latest version of the app. If you're watching this in the future, you can probably skip this step. Next, if you haven't already, install Pybricks on the hub using the Install Pybricks Firmware button and follow the instructions. So select your hub, review the firmware licenses, choose a unique name for your hub if you have more than one, and follow the steps in the video. In case of the Technic Hub, you just need to make sure the hub is off and then press and hold the button as you click Install and select it in your browser, and then just wait a few minutes. All right, now we're ready to start making a program. By the way, you can download many ready-made example projects from pybricks.com projects, but here we'll do it step-by-step. Step. So open a new block project and give it a name. As Balash explained, almost everything in Pybricks is free, but block coding is exclusively available for supporters. Thanks to your help, we're able to work on exciting new features like Xbox controller support or block coding. 
So thank you. Just to make sure that everything is working, connect to the hub and run this little test program. As you can see, it says hello PyBricks, so everything is working. By the way, unlike in a video on RacingBricks channel from two years ago, programs are now saved on the hub right away. No need to install the firmware again. Now let's build the actual program. The first thing you'll always do in a PyBricks project is assemble your creation just as you do in real life. This means specifying your hub, motors, and sensors, and how everything is connected. This really helps you catch mistakes early on, and giving each motor a name based on its function makes it really easy to reference them without having to remember all the ports. In this case, we have three motors. There's the front and rear drive motors, which we'll call front and rear. And in the case of the Audi, they're on ports A and B. And you can leave the default directions unchanged. In some vehicles, this makes the car go backwards due to the gears, so you can easily swap the forward direction here. And finally, we have a motor on port D for steering, which we'll call steer. And together, they can be used to configure a car block with the steering motor, and the drive motors we've just set up. This will take care of centering the steering mechanism and resetting the rotation sensor such that zero is exactly in the middle. The main program is going to be quite small. We'll make it drive using the controller triggers and steer using the left analog stick. But first, let's put in the required car blocks to do that. Because we'll be updating the drive power and steering repeatedly, we'll use a repeat forever block. In it, we'll put a block to set the drive power and the steering as a percentage from minus 100%, which is all the way left, to plus 100%, which is all the way to the right, and 0% is straight ahead. Before we proceed, let's try this out. The car should automatically center its wheels and then start driving straight ahead at 50% power. If your vehicle is going in reverse or the front and rear are going in opposite directions, this is a good time to review the ports and default directions up here. Now that we know that the car is working, we can add the Xbox controller blocks to make the drive power and steering percentage work the way we want. First, we'll add the Xbox controller to the setup. Now we can use the analog input block and let's place it in the steering block. This input block will report one of the controller's analog inputs. For this vehicle, it seems intuitive to use the left analog horizontal input. This value ranges from minus 100% to plus 100%, so we can conveniently use it in the steering block as it is. For drive power, I found it convenient to use the trigger inputs on the back, the right for acceleration and the left for brake. One way to make this work is to set the drive power to the acceleration value minus the brake value. This way, the result will again vary between minus 100 and plus 100, which is just what we need. To do this, we'll take the math block from the data category and then add the right trigger and left trigger inputs. And this completes our program. If, like me or Balash, you're not a frequent gamer and you buy this controller just for your LEGO stuff, you may still need to update the controller using the Xbox Accessories app. If you are a freaking gamer, chances are your controller is already up to date to use Bluetooth. Now, there's a few things to remember when using the Xbox controller with the Technic Hub. So far, we could easily change the program and change it again and again because the hub remained connected to the computer. However, we found that the Xbox controller doesn't always like that for some computers. To make sure it works for everyone, we've configured the Technic Hub to automatically disconnect from the computer before attempting to connect to the Xbox controller. And this is fine if you just want to play with your Technic Harness, but it can be a bit annoying if you want to change and test your code frequently. We hope to improve this in the future if the Technic Hub can handle it. But in this case, we've already tested the car functions, so we should be good to go. The very first time you use the controller this way, you'll have to put it in pairing mode. The next time, just turning on will do, which is even more convenient. To be more specific, Pairing mode is needed whenever you've used your controller with something else before using it with the hub. This could be the Xbox console or another hub. To put the controller in pairing mode, first turn it on. Then hold the pairing button in the back for about two seconds and let go. You should see the light now blink more rapidly and constantly. Now we can start the program. After a few seconds, the controller light turns solid. And after a few more seconds, you can start driving. Best of all, you can just stop and start the program again with the green button. And this time, it's sufficient to just turn the controller on, quick and easy. All right, thanks for following along this far. So, let us know if you give this a try. In the next couple of weeks, we'll work to further improve connectivity and add a bunch more examples, including for this huge Technic crane. Back to you, Balash. Thank you, Lawrence, for the presentation. So folks, what do you think? Isn't this exciting? I've been waiting for a solution like this since PowerDoc was introduced.
I know it's still not a plug and play experience, it requires some preparation and background knowledge, but it's definitely worth investing your time because the improvement in the control experience is almost incomparable. So if you have a BT enabled Xbox controller and a recent LEGO Technic set, I recommend you give this a try. You can also test the code without a subscription by using Python instead. The sample for the Audi will be available under projects, one set projects, you have to find the Technic Hub, then scroll down to the Audi and when the video goes live you will see another project here, namely this one. Just use the copy button here, then go to the coding section, create a new file, select the Python option, give the file name, you don't need a template this time. Paste the copied code here and if you have the Audi, you can test it immediately, of course after installing Pybricks, according to the instructions you could see before. Or, if you want to try a different vehicle, the 4x4 Xtreme of Roder, for example, then you can simply modify the steering port from D to C, reverse the drive motor directions, connect the hub, run the code, the hub will disconnect automatically, then you can connect the controller and everything is ready to play. A quick disclaimer probably should have shared at the beginning, this wasn't a sponsored video, I'm also a Patreon supporter of Pybricks, I made this video because I think this is a fantastic achievement by the Pybricks team and I want to spread the word and make sure everyone in the LEGO community finds this great solution. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section, if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications because there will be more exciting LEGO videos coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.